the Gators who've already doubled their win total from a year ago look to get their ninth win and secure a spot in a New Year's Six Bowl game. Evan McPherson kicking it off. This will be a touchback. And DeAndre Francois will bring the team out from the 25-yard line. Francois in high The offensive line has been brutal for the Seminoles this year. That's a big reason why they're five and six on the year. They give Francois time to throw here. He's got a rope, but it's through the hands of the receiver. A flag is down, though. They went to Tamarian Terry with a game-winning 74-yard touchdown against BC in the fourth quarter last week. Pass interference. Offense, number 15. Half the distance of the goal. Repeat first down. Florida State, the second most penalized team in college football. You see the push off on Henderson by Terry. Not a lot, but enough to draw flat. Yeah, and Florida State offensively coming out, trying to be aggressive. Terry is their deep threat. But you can see with the first pass of the game, this arm strength of DeAndre Francois, one of the best true throwers in all of college football. So from the 13-yard line, they'll give it to Cam Akers. Bottled up after a gain of one by Adam Schuler, a grad transfer from West Virginia. And Francois has such a repeatable release. They're just nice and over the top. Very nice spin. But what stands out probably as much as anything when evaluating him is just how tough he is, man. I mean, he takes hit after hit after hit, hangs in there in a very congested pocket, and continues to try to deliver the ball accurately. I've been impressed with his growth this year. Here's second and 21, a penalty marker down. Akers is down as well as Ja'Kai Polite, who's had a terrific year, an all-SEC caliber season from the edge for Florida, made the stick. ACC officials today, Gary Patterson is our referee. Legal formation, offense, more than four players in the backfield. Penalty is declined. Third down. Willie Taggart in his first year here at Florida State. One year at Oregon. Prior to that, four years in this state at South Florida. He is from Bradenton. Played college football for Jack Harbaugh, Jim's dad, at Western Kentucky. Third down and 23, and the Seminoles just play it safe here. They run it. And Florida does well against the offensive line, taking down Akers. Schuler is there again for the Gators to force a punt. Greg, what, what kills you about that drive right there isn't just not moving the ball, but what the penalties do to your field position. Look where the returner for Florida and Freddie Swain is sitting right now in the middle of the field. And near the 43-yard line, an average return will get you across midfield. Logan Tyler is the Florida State punter. Freddie Swain has a punt return for a touchdown. His back contact with the punter. No flag. It works out okay for Florida State. They're saying the punter was outside the tackle box. Therefore, it's not roughing the punter. And with the rule to protect punters, it only applies when you are inside the tackle box. Now, with a rugby-style kicker, you give up the freedom and you give up the cloak of protection as you move outside that tackle box. Now, it's tough sometimes to tell when that tackle box starts because you're not in the true traditional offensive alignment, but... Right there, I think it was a good call. I don't know, man. If he was outside the tackle box, it was by an inch. I'm just surprised they didn't throw it. It wasn't clear that he was outside the tackle box. Good D up front on Scarlett. Florida State able to get off blocks and make a play. DeMarcus Christmas playing his final game here at Doak Campbell, the senior on the stop. Felipe Franks, the quarterback for the Gators, kind of an up-and-down season but has played his best football the last five quarters against South Carolina, really came alive, started to be effective on the ground. Franks is going to take off here, has running room, and knocked down at the 40-yard line. Pick up of eight, they'll put the Gators in third down and three. 20 touchdown passes this year compared to just nine last year. Some of that is Dan Mullen's offense. A lot of it is Dan Mullen's offense. One of the 
best quarterback coaches you'll find in developing raw talent into stars. Quick third down and three here for Florida State. And the pass high, incomplete, intended for Siante Lewis. So the Gators go three and out. If the first six snaps of offense are any indicator, it appears as though these defenses have come to play. And, and a big reason why Florida is on the verge of going to the New Year's Six, and the only reason why Florida State has a chance to get to the postseason is because of those defenses on both sides. Proud groups that make it very difficult to beat you, not only through the air, but on the ground as well. Tommy Townsend, punter for Florida. DJ Matthews, who has a punt return for a touchdown, is back. And yeah, this is an excellent kick. You hear the Gator fans downed in some the same number of losses as last year's team. After Florida State lost five or nine games in five years, they've lost 12 the last two years. Trying to avoid a 13th. Here's Murray on first down. And a great play by true freshman Trey Dean. Out in space, only a gain of a couple. There are a lot of people, guys, early in the year that were saying, you know what, maybe it'll just be one year for Willie Taggart at Florida State, but not by his own choosing. Yeah, and it's going to take time. I mean, the guys that are in this offense were not built, were not recruited to run an offense that's this, this style. Francois doesn't get much. So it's going to take some time. And you've seen some strides made in the last month of the season. They've maintained the, being competitive. And you've seen some growth. What's frustrating is some of the unorganized things that you see when you're watching them. Substitution issues. Guys late getting off the ball. Lack of effort when a game gets out of hand. There's been a few things that have rubbed me the wrong way. But look, this is a long-term play. And Willie Taggart, everywhere he's been, has gotten it turned around. You would imagine... The same will be happening here in Florida State. Francois in trouble, hit by Schuler, and then Polite cleans him up. Zaniga was back there first to force Francois to move up in the pocket, and then the teammates were there for the Gators to bring him down for a sack. Yeah, they're going to have to do a better job handling these defensive ends. That's the strength of Florida's team. When you see Zuniga, I mean, just go right around Williams on the right-hand side. Not even much of a move by Zuniga. Just a subtle hesitation. And boom, right around the loop. You have to give your quarterback more time. Line drive punt. Fielded on the 45 by Swain. And pushed out of bounds at the 36-yard line. So excellent start and outstanding. Seven touchdowns responsible for no turnovers in the last couple games. Let a 17-point come from behind win against South Carolina two weeks ago in Gainesville. And he's a work in progress. You, you lose sight sometimes because you see freshmen doing miraculous things. He's only a sophomore. He's going to be a much better player here in a couple years. Thanks to throw on first down. And the catch is made by Lewis, a gain of about three on the play. You no, know, Greg, he talked about the two defenses coming to play today. And I think the strength when you look at the two fronts for these teams is that they are not going to allow either offense to run the football on them. These quarterbacks better be ready to throw it and try and create some explosive plays. Second and seven for Franks and the Gators. Play action. And Franks hits Tony, and it's going to be close to a first down. A couple weeks ago, guys, Kyle Trask, who Franks beat out in camp, he may have won the job going into South Carolina, but he hurt his foot and was out for the season. And then, you know, Franks scored a couple times and was shushing his own crowd because, obviously, he heard some of the boos early in the game when they were down. Yeah, he's an emotional player, and you know, he needs to grow from a maturity standpoint. But, man, he's bounced back from some difficult performances this year and like we've been talking about has really been playing good football of late 20th career start he's been benched three times running up the right side is the Michael P. Ryan pushed back after a gain of about four as the Gators are inside the 25 yard line P. Ryan and Jordan Scarlett have split carries for most of the year and P. Ryan coming in has only 14 more yards than his backfield mate Scarlett that's probably their best offensive position group Wide receivers have been up and down. The offensive line has really had their struggles. One group that's been rock solid from start to finish on the season has been those running backs. Play fake here. Franks with time on second down. Everybody covered. Franks leaving the pocket. And he'll tuck it and run. 
and scoot out of play close to the first down. He appears to have it at the 15-yard line. Man, I thought Felipe Franks had a chance. You're going to see a little post corner route right here. And he's open. And Felipe Franks is looking in that direction. I mean, that's open when you're playing against Florida State. You got to cut that loose. That's a big play left on the board in the red zone by Felipe Franks. A good job of making something out of nothing, though, with his legs. This will be a run. Key ride up the middle. Down to the 11-yard line. Leonard Warner, the middle linebacker, is there on the hit. A penalty marker is down, though, in the backfield. Florida State's already been penalized once. Personal foul. Face mask. Number five. Defense. Half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. Now that's the kind of thing that the Knowles have been doing this year. Dontavius Jackson called for a face mask. You make a good play on first down, but... I mean, you can see it clearly. Jackson, on the end of the line of scrimmage, not even involved in the play, but taking his right hand and putting it up into the face mask and not letting go. That's the disorganization and you know, undisciplined play you've been talking about, though, with this Florida State team this year. Shows up over and over and over again. At what point is that going to get ironed out? I mean, it's the 12th game of the season. Can't be making mistakes like that. First and goal on the six for the Gators. Piron trying to find a hole. Dragged down at the two-yard line. That was a good run. He hit a defender at his ankles, and he still picked up three or four. Dan Mullen, who is 4-0 in this rivalry as an assistant coach, back when the Gators winning national championships, Urban Meyer, the head coach here. Sorry about the cotton candy. Here's second down and goal, and Piron will not get in. Good job at the line of scrimmage by the front for Florida State. It'll be third down and goal. Yeah, this front is so good. You think you're just going to run right into the teeth of this defense. Good luck. With DeMarcus Christmas and Marvin Wilson. Brian Burns, who can play off the ball in this part of the field, is a handful as well, number 99. Even though it's not senior day for Burns, it could be his final game here. He's an excellent player, could go to the NFL. He's trying to come up big here on third down and go to two. It reminds me a lot of Arden Key from LSU a year ago who has had a decent rookie year in the NFL. Very long physical player. Can rush the passer and disrupt off the edge. Franks will throw. Franks being chased and throws it away. Brian Burns was there for the Knowles, fourth and goal. We'll see if Dan Mullen keeps the offense out there or if he brings out the field goal unit for a short kick. And he's got so much faith in his defense. That would be the only reason why he'd think about going here. And Felipe Franks is actually running to the sideline or walking. This surprises me, Greg. I mean, it is cranked up. It is loud down here in this end zone. And Florida has struggled to run the football versus this front on this drive. Well, keep an eye on Kadarius Tony in the slot. They might work an isolation route with their quickest wide receiver. They throw it on third down. It's a quarterback run. No way! Franks continues to go breaking tackles, but he won't get in. Corey Dern was there first. The Bulls take over on downs. It's not a terrible play call, but Tyler Jordan, the left guard, number 64, just completely misses Durden as Felipe Franks tries to stretch it to the left tackle. It's a great defensive play by Durden on fourth and goal. The poor execution along the front by the Gators offensive line. FSU takes over on its two-yard line with Francois handing it off. Getting out of the end zone is Patrick and pushes the pile. Out to the six-yard line. Jacques Patrick, 6'3", 234. That's why he's in there on this series, to make sure that they give some breathing room to Francois. Second and six. 
Walt Bell calls the plays for Florida State. Willie Taggart gave up those play calling duties about a month ago. Another run. Patrick nowhere to go. Boshan Joseph has him wrapped up. He gets tackled in the end zone. The forward progress will be all the way back out at the five yard line. Still a loss on the play, but only a one yard loss instead of five. Yeah, you see where forward progress has stopped. It's right around there. He gets driven all the way back. As the Gators thought for a half second they had a safety, but nowhere near it, obviously, as they're out around the five. I'll tell you what, Florida State has really invested in this real estate inside the 10-yard line for this entire quarter. Well, Florida State, if they start using their tempo, they might catch Florida in a missed substitution. Florida's been late getting on a couple times. Got to get a first down, though, to go tempo as that pass is behind the intended receiver, Murray. But a flag is thrown here. Trey Dean can't believe it. See Trey Dean with that left arm that was draped on Murray as they tried to throw the slant. It was actually a bad throw by Francois, way behind. I think that's what gave him the call, too. If that ball's thrown out in front, that might not be called. Well, it's pretty obvious, though, and a good one by the official on a pretty critical third down. Florida State has been to a bowl game 36 consecutive years. They've had a winning record in 41 straight years. Both of those are in jeopardy today. A huge play here, though, on first down on the run. Patrick close to a first down at the 19-yard line. They're 126th in rushing in the country, and now the tempo after they get the first down. Back to Patrick. Up the middle again. A gain of seven to the 26. Yeah, this hyper speed is so challenging to defend. You just see how quickly Florida State gets aligned. Francois already clapping his hands, asking for the football. Here comes pressure off the edge. The blitz picked up Francois. Close to the first down. Brought down by Kyrie Campbell. And this tempo, too, it, it really limits what defensive coordinator Todd Grantham can call. I mean, he loves being aggressive. He loves pressure, blitz packages, exotics. But this tempo, it's hard to call those plays. He brought the blitz on second down. He did have a DB off the edge there for that third down, Sean Davis. Prior to the snap, ball start, number 59, offense, five-yard penalty, third down. And Brady Scott tackle. Called for a false start. And it's such a huge play. I mean, uh, this is the one thing that you have to make sure you're good on when you're running tempo the way Florida likes to, Florida State likes to employ it. I mean, you got to make sure everyone's set, everyone's communicating correctly because a third and six versus a third and one, it's two completely different situations for an offense. Well, now what you're talking about, Todd Grantham might bring the heat with a third down to six yeah keep an eye on the edge number 33 david reese here he comes and there's movement again was there contact first though by joseph i think there was which would mean five yards against the defense start. no number 59 offense five yard penalty third down I mean, you're at home, though, and you're getting called for false starts on your home field on consecutive plays. That's the fourth penalty on FSU today. Man, I'm really surprised by this. They actually got Brady Scott, but look at Voshan Joseph go in, and it feels like that was almost simultaneous. Like, it was started by Voshan Joseph over the football. He got back on side. There was no contact by Joseph. Man, he was way into the neutral zone, though. I'm a little surprised by that call. So now it's third and 11. It was third and one. Francois with time. Oh, there was a receiver open downfield. Instead, he threw it short and it was nearly picked off by Gardner Johnson. There is a penalty marker down in the secondary. But man, Francois had a receiver down the seam there. Yeah, I think they're going to get Voshan Joseph here. Holding defense. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. 
So Florida State gets a first down by penalty. We've had three straight penalties, two on the Knolls, and now this one on Florida. Yeah, and you actually look at this. It looks like it's right here. It looks like that's where the call is. As Cam Akers is trying to cross face Voshan Joseph, you see that left arm reach out and grab Cam Akers as he tries to hit that angle route. It's a good call by the official. So first down on the Florida State 28-yard line. He'll give it to Akers off the right edge. Breaks a tackle. Pushed out of bounds at the 34-yard line. Akers rushed for over 1,000 yards last year. And he's under 700 this year, even with 110 yards against Boston College last week. But so much of that is the offensive line. The coaches said he's really handled it well. He's a young guy, just a true sophomore. This is going to be maybe a double pass. Yes, a deep ball thrown to Neighbors who fell down. Oh, Neighbors lost his footing on the pass by Matthews. Incomplete. And you can actually see Chauncey Gardner-Johnson saying, look, 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 hang on. They're in an unusual alignment. But the rest of the Florida Gators don't recognize it. Just a little outside where the throw might be but my goodness if he keeps his feet that's likely a catch for neighbors instead it's third and five you see acres leaving the backfield francois pressure coming takes a shot down the field and thrown out of bounds boy chauncey gardner had a hold of terry but maybe while the ball was in the air they ruled it uncatchable because it landed a few yards out of bounds I'll tell you, Greg, Dave, this entire drive for Florida State essentially encapsulates their entire season. Take two steps forward, one step back. You've got penalties. You've got guys falling down. You can't get lined up. I mean, it just, it's unbelievable with the athleticism we see on the field with this team, but the lack of execution and discipline is alarming. And now the Knolls have to kick it back inside four minutes to go here in the first quarter. Good punt, driving Swain inside his 15-yard line. And good coverage by Florida State. Swain tackled at the 24. 52-yard punt, 8-yard return, no score. Lady 6, unless the Knowles win this game today. Throw the ball. And back the throw goes Franks. Looking deep, got single coverage downfield. Almost caught, but incomplete. Unable to hang on was Tyree Cleveland. Was checking with Tyree Cleveland. Helped off to the Florida locker room after being injured on the previous play, which was an incompletion. So second and 10 on the Gator, 24-yard line. Another pass play here. Franks has a completion to Grimes. But he's brought down at the 30. Gain of six. Here's, here's the, the injury. injury. Yeah, here's the injury to Tyree Cleveland. As he goes down, you see him land awkwardly on that right shoulder. He walked off gingerly. That, a lot of attention being paid to that right arm. Hope everything's okay with him. He's their speedster and their deep threat. And immediately taking him into the locker room, guys. Here's a swing pass on third down and a first down for the Gators. Josh Hammond. And he had Grimes out there blocking against Asante Samuel. They went to high school. What a together great. in Sunrise, Florida. Yeah, what a great block by Grimes. Really made the play to get the conversion. Nice fill-in for the injured Tyree Cleveland. First down to the 39-yard line. Scarlett running left. Picks up about four. The second time in the history of Florida football that they've won eight games after being under 500 a year ago. The last time uh, was uh, 1980. Florida won eight games after a winless 1979 season. And so Mullen with the second most wins by a first year FBS head coach, Josh Heifel. UCF have won 11 games. You wonder if they'll get 12 now that McKenzie Milton is certainly out after that horrific leg and drink. Here's Franks throwing it downfield. A diving attempt. And it's a catch pulled in by Jefferson inside the 20-yard line for 37 yards. What a beautiful catch by Jefferson. Fully extended. Does he secure it? Looks like he does. Yeah. Remember, the ball can touch the ground as long as there's not a lot of movement once it does. 
It does look like that ball is secured, but they're definitely going to take another look at it. Yeah, as long as you don't lose control. Blowing on the field is a catch. catch. Previous play is under review. And Jefferson is injured. whose dad Sean played 13 years in the NFL with an incredible catch the ruling on the field stands according to replay yeah, and if you see it it touches the ground that's clear but it can touch the ground as long as the ball doesn't move once it touches the ground so it's pretty clear just based on what the official said he said the call stands they can't confirm it but it has to be indisputable video evidence to overturn and Based on the angles that we took a look at, I think it was the correct call by this ACC officiating crew. I'll tell you, it was a great effort, guys, but also a terrific throw from Felipe Franks right there because he had to get that ball underneath the underneath over the underneath defender. He wanted to throw it early, Greg. He just had to wait that split second for Jefferson to cross the field. Yeah, I thought he had a chance at him right out of Jefferson's break, yep. but it being a slower developing route. Not a lot of guys can overcome that time that he took to evaluate it and survey it. But because of Felipe Franks' big arm, he can get it 65 yards down the field if necessary. And he made a nice throw, like you alluded to, Tom, over the defender. And now Florida is in the red zone for the second time. They were stopped on downs the first time. Franks running it here. And doesn't even get back to the line of scrimmage. Loses a yard as Leonard Warner is there first for Florida State defensively. Defensively, Florida State has done a really nice job against the run all season. Harlan Barnett, their defensive coordinator, comes from the Michigan State coaching tree. And if you talk to Coach D'Antonio, he says, hey, 1A, 1B, and 1C is stop the run. It's been obvious with how much attention they've paid to that part of the offensive plan so far this season. Yeah, they only give up three yards a carry, which is 15th best in the country. Here's a pass play on second down. Jefferson able to stay in bounds. They rule him out at the 13-yard line. So he got six yards on the play, pushed out by Stanford Samuels. So third down, you wonder, since Florida went for it on fourth down from the two, if Dan Mullen will consider going for it if they don't pick it up here at third and fourth. to the air looking leaves the pocket dragged down at the 10-yard line so he got a couple yards it's fourth and two again he's got to kick the ball here guys he has to he's going to you're playing great defense Florida State can't move it you've already let three points off the board by going before you have to and a great effort there by Brian Burns to bring Felipe Franks, who's a big boy, down in the open field as he retract after his pass rush to force the field goal. That's if they snap it before the end of the quarter. They do. And it's good from true freshman Evan McPherson as one quarter is in the books here in Tallahassee. McPherson on the season, 14 of 16 on field goals this season. So it's 3 nothing Florida. We'll be back after this message and a word from our ABC. And our best wishes to two of the members of our crew who are not with us today. Uh, Roger McNally and Bob Bortz. So get well soon, guys. I know this is our last game as a crew until bowl season. As Florida State decides to bring it out, Keyshawn Helton, and he gets absolutely throttled at the 15. There is a penalty marker down at the 32-yard line as we take a look at our unexpected outcome brought to you by Exxon Mobil. It was last week, DeAndre Francois to Tamarian Taylor, a 74-yard touchdown pass. The first FSU player since Peter Warwick 20 years ago with two 70-yard receiving touchdowns in the same year. And it gives the Knowles a win over a ranked team and keeps their hopes of a bowl appearance alive. Remember, they've been to a bowl game 36 straight years. Holding, by the way, was the call on the kickoff. As, uh, again, a poor decision by Helton just to run it out of the end zone. Should have stayed put. 
But you look at some of their deficits, they were down to Samford. Yeah, and came back to win that game. And couldn't get anything going in that game either. I mean, it's been pretty remarkable. This group's been resilient. You have to give them that. There's a lot of issues that I have with the decisions and some of the penalties and just unsound play, but they've been resilient. They've bounced back. Here's Patrick on first down, lowers the shoulder and runs over Jawan Taylor to the 13-yard line, picking up four. It's so, it's so difficult, guys, when, when you're trying to be a tempo team. Tempo is all about getting first downs. If you can't get first downs, you can't be who you are. And it's one of the reasons why this offense has sputtered so significantly. They can't ever get into rhythm. They have three first downs so far here today. Wow, what a shot as Patrick lowers the boom on Voshan Joseph at 235. Patrick outweighs the Miami middle linebacker. I'm telling you, man, Voshan Joseph will hit you, too. But don't stand on the tracks while the train's coming through. Patrick's a load when he gets full head of steam. And they run it here on third down and two with Patrick. Going to be close. Sean Davis in there first. Patrick is injured on the play. You see Florida State is short. So fourth down. They'll tend to Patrick. will step aside. They have split the last four meetings. USC's won the last two at the Coliseum. Here's the punt by Tyler, and it drives Swain back. Inside is 25, and he lets it go. It does check up, and Florida will have it at the 26-yard line. A 57-yard punt. Taco Bell is celebrating student sections and passionate fans like these, awarding the best student section of the year. Go to ESPN.com slash Taco Bell to see if your team made this week's rankings and to see how your school can compete. Pretty good turnout. We weren't sure what we would have today, but it is a rivalry game. You do have a lot of Florida fans. I think the image that everybody recalls is when they were playing Clemson and the stadium was half full in the fourth quarter. He had that professor with his shirt off <laughs> enjoying a sunny day and a good book. And, and reading a book called Dark Places. When you lose that badly, I think that's a very appropriate title. Florida will run it to the left on first down, and look out, there goes P. Ryan. Inside the 30, nobody going to catch him. 74-yard touchdown. As soon as he got past the line of scrimmage, you knew it. He was out the game. only national championship as the head coach of the Florida Gators. Warful through for over 300 yards and three touchdowns. And it's 10-0 here, Florida, as the 11th-ranked Gators lead the unranked Knowles early in the second quarter. Let's go back to the touchdown by P. Ryan. It was really well blocked on the front. You're going to see really nice work by the Gator offensive line as P. Ryan tries to stretch it to the outside. But there's a lot of issues with the defense here. Look at A.J. Westbrook. He fills this void when P. Ryan is actually working to the outside. That's just a really poor run fit by the safety for the Florida State defense. And P. Ryan, as soon as he has that crease, he's out the gate. Greg, that's why you hear coaches all the time talking about gap integrity, gap responsibility, leveraging the football back to the inside. That's a prime example. You have to be sound at the second and third level when your run fits. That's how you get to five and six. Francois' pass caught. The knee was down on the catch by D.J. Matthews. Short gain on first down. At some point, Florida State is going to have to figure out a way to be a little more effective through the air. So far, DeAndre Francois has only five passing yards, and he's got to stretch the defense, and that offensive line has to give him time to locate wide receivers downfield. 
They run it, though, on second down, and Cam Akers gets the carry for a couple of yards. Polite on the tackle. There's a Florida State player that lost a helmet there. One of the offensive linemen, Alec Everly, their center, is making his 44th straight start. He'll have to come out for a play on senior day. So now it's third down. You need, you haven't got past the 33-yard line. You need to yeah. throw the ball to get a first down. you got a backup center, Baby and Johnson. In. And if I'm Florida, I'm putting my best pass rusher right over that center. I mean, I want to make him think maybe I can get him to throw a snap off target because he's coming in cold into the game. I tell you, fellas, this Florida State offense has passed the 30-yard line one time in this entire game, and that was to the 33 earlier. So uh, tough to play good offense when you can't cross midfield. Francois facing pressure, Akers wide open, the Gators lost him in space, and there he goes past the 40. Akers inside the 10, touchdown, no. Penalty marker down. 70-yard touchdown if it stands. It won't. And it's an illegal shift penalty that does in Florida State. Sixth penalty of the first half by FSU. Look at the motion. He is moving, and this wide receiver is still moving. 